in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Let it be so in my life. According to your faithfulness. Let it be so in my life. Amen. According to your grace. One more time. tonight because you are a good God we call you faithful we call you merciful we call you powerful you have been all this and more to us and tonight we want to start by saying thank you it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because your compassions they fail not thank you for gathering us again to bless us to lift us to heal us to bring us deeper into the experience of the spirit life and tonight we submit our spirits we submit our minds we submit our hearts and our all we pray that under the influence of your word and under the influence of your spirit you will give us very solid encounters tonight in the name of Jesus and tonight we declare that we will live with manifold testimonies Amen. that someone who came here crying will live rejoicing Amen. that someone who came here downcast will live full of hope Amen. that by the spirit someone who came here confused will indeed find direction finally Amen. that someone who came here powerless and in all way natural will live supernatural Amen. Someone who came here full of ignorance will live full of light. Amen. Someone who came here full of doubts and fear will live full of faith and courage. Amen. May this be your portion tonight. Amen. And to Jesus be all the glory. Amen. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Please give Jesus a big hand clap. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you greet someone by your left and right and then please be seated. Amen. I welcome you to his presence. This is Koinonia. May God give you an encounter that will change your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says they go from strength to strength. As many as appear in Zion before the Lord. It is our corporate destiny in Christ to keep going from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Once we appear before the Lord, 
there is a mandate upon us to go from glory to glory and that will be your experience you believe that shout a believing amen, amen. hallelujah again please help me honor um, our very own reverend yusuf akila all the way from house on the rock just <laughs> hallelujah this is a house of honor koinonia amen even if he comes here a thousand times, we'll honor him a thousand times. Blessings to you, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. I welcome you tonight in the name of Jesus. Okay, just a little announcement, a very quick one, then we'll get to the word. Hallelujah. Still in response to um, the economic situation, you know, within our nation, and we thank God for all that the government is doing. And like I've always thought, the church is light. We are also salt. We are not giving the ministry of complaining and grumbling and pointing fingers one to another. And um, we are not called to do everything, but we are called to do our best. And so um, we decided to set up a little palliative to... Um, encourage encourage as many hallelujah now all fingers are not equal the church is a school is a training ground and I know that with what you are hearing by God's grace tomorrow many of you will feed nations but God and us have not been given the ministry of magic it is line upon line precept upon precept no matter how attentive you are you will not become in one day it takes a while are we together and so our assignment is to reveal to you the picture of your future from the word but whilst you are evolving into that glorious destiny it is also our mandate to communicate the ministry of mercy and midwife your growth so that you are not discouraged and so when we do the things that we do we do it expressing the love of Jesus we're a very responsible ministry and um, it, it would be unfair to deafen our ears to the cries of people we also once cried and when we did God raised people as instruments of mercy who were there to support us so that we are not discouraged and now that he has helped us we must communicate the same ministry of mercy hallelujah and so we decided to just do something um, to put together. We ordered some bags of rice. And um, I, by the way, I want to thank all who are part of the committee that set this up, you know, getting the bags of rice, um, um, you know, lots of bags of rice. It's not less than 120 or so. And, those who now had to repackage it all through yesterday night even into this morning there's been people working tirelessly to put it together and i want to say thank you to the departments and the committee that um, spent their time some of them not having sleep or enough sleep to put this together now the bible says in first corinthians 14 40 that all things be done decently and in order we're people of order we're not just godly people and um, now this will not go around to everybody if it doesn't go around to you be patient when the next phase comes I'm sure it will be your turn so that we behave well in the house of God part of the things we're learning in the house of God is how to behave like royalty hallelujah royal people like the Bible says we are a people of order so let me just announce a a slip has been passed to a few people um as many people have been sampled and sorted around so all those who have those slips they are the ones who benefit from this phase of the palliatives it's already done it's not something we're about to do praise god so immediately after service all those who have the slips please with, with every sense of order and decency, you find your place to hall two. You don't know where hall two is, one of the overflows down. Please, um, protocol and security, you can do well to direct them 
when you get in, you sit down in an orderly manner. Those mandated will communicate, they will address you, and then in a very orderly manner, you have the opportunity to pick whatever it is that they've packaged for you. And um, what happens to one in this house happens to all. Hallelujah. That is the spirit of brotherhood. So what happens to one happens to all. And we thank God for the privilege to be able to do it. Um, may not be able to serve everyone for now, but by God's grace, we hope that as God grants us grace, we'll do it as many times as will be needed to see how we can support our people. We shouldn't have people praying, shouting, and then at least for the sake of the children. We shouldn't have children. Uh, adults can go and eat somewhere else and return back home and refire their faith. Hallelujah. But children should not be roaming around from house to house. That is a bad culture for them to learn. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the privilege to be able to do this. And we bless the palliatives that our dear people will be receiving after service. This is not for showmanship. This is not for politics. We do this from a standpoint of love. But we do this as a lesson to help believers evolve to become responsible Christians. That beyond praying in tongues and shouting hallelujah, we must be light and be salt indeed. I pray that this will inspire someone to do the same within their neighborhood, inspire someone to do the same as much and as far as your resources can allow. And as you commit to doing that, may the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, I pray. I believe in practical Christianity. For as long as our Christian experience ends in just praying in tongues and shouting, um, as spiritual as that is, we will only remain a nuisance to our world and to society. We must translate spirituality to a context that affects territory, first spiritually, then help their philosophy and their understanding, and then of course economically. The church is not a poor place. We'll be lying if we say the church is a poor place. Um, we have heavenly resources. We also have economic resources. And from that which God has given, we must do well to support what the government is doing, to support what well-meaning citizens. We are not just Christians. We are citizens of our various nations. And we owe it to be sensitive and attentive to the realities of the time. And so this is what we are doing as our contribution to helping alleviate the pain, uh, but more than just collecting palliatives, the real key is to settle down and listen. Palliatives can solve a temporal problem, but like Martha, if you settle down and receive the truth of Scripture, are we together? And then open up your heart to receive the engracing that comes with that truth. Someday your receiving palliatives will only be a story to inspire others. You will now, some of you will build bands, but not like the rich fool. The bands will be to bless nations. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. I believe that in a matter of months or a few years, there are people in this place who, as a single individual, will have the wealth of nations. Amen. I truly believe this with all my heart. Not just money without a mission that you can send to mission agencies, take children out of the street, stop women who are crying by the roadside because of irresponsible men who married them and bring order and decadence to society. And also be able to help people who did not have the privilege. Some of them are not bad people. They are, it, they are victims of their philosophies. They were not taught the nobility of a responsible life. Are we together? So the families that they lead, they lead it out of the sometimes the depravity of low-level thinking. So they are not necessarily bad. Their actions may be bad, but their motives are sincere. They just don't know better. This is why the church does not stop as a charity organization. We are primarily, primarily a spiritual platform that communicates truth that is based on scripture, that is intended to, number one, connect people to Jesus, then connect people to the principles of the kingdom and release grace from that understanding that empowers them to live heavenly, meaningful lives of dominion and dignity. That looks like your life. Shout amen. amen. 
Hallelujah. I thought very deeply this morning into the afternoon about God's faithfulness over my life and over our lives and over this ministry. And I thought to encourage us to start tonight by taking a minute or two to really say thank you. Now, I, you hear me repeat these things. Um, God's servant will say, only those who can think, only thoughtful people can be grateful people. That if you can be thoughtful, you think about the things God has done to you, in you, through you, only gratitude will come out from within you. God has been good to us as individuals. He's been good to us as a ministry, marvelous manifestations of his hand. And while seated, I want us together as a global family to just say thank you, Jesus. Go ahead. Tell him thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate him for the miracles. We are not a careless ministry. Our hearts are open. Jesus, you have healed the sick. Thank you. Jesus, you have lifted people from their low levels and placed them. Someone who is grateful is saying thank you. Thank him for the testimonies in this house. Miracle children, miracle marriages, responsible men, responsible women, godly children, jobs, ministries that have come out from the things and the truths, the ability to mentor nations, to disciple nations. Someone say thank you. For the things you have done, for the battles you have won, only you are worthy of my praise. We magnify your name. For the things you have done, for the battles you have won, only you are worthy of my praise. I magnify your name. Thank you for the word that comes week in, week out transforming our lives thank him for the capacity to be a blessing to the nations spiritually in leadership economically thank him for the many great men and women that god has raised from this house through this house by his hands thank him for your children your spouse someone tell him thank you don't be tired Thank you. Thank you for grace. Thank you for ease. Thank you for favor. Thank you for strategic relationships. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for stamina. Thank you for courage. Thank you for the ministry of angels. Thank him for divine protection. Thank him for visibility, for preserving his honor upon our lives. For the things you have done, for the battles you have won, only you are worthy of my praise. Hallelujah. To God be the glory and may he accept our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Listen, do you know why many people do not experience the hand of God in their lives consistently? Among the many reasons, please lend me your attention, among the many reasons, it is that most believers take the faithfulness of God for granted. You know, when God brings you out of a place of pain, suffering need sometimes within a moment you forget the pain of yesterday and we do not lay it to heart to say thank you when God lifts you as a man of God some of us when you came here you had no jobs some of us when you came here you had nothing you had to trek your way here discouraged with all kinds of causes all kinds of manifestations but look what he's producing out of your life it's important that you learn to be grateful Every time you take God for granted, he will not fight you. 
but the very state of ingratitude would authorize Satan to remind you of how you were before his mercy came. It's true. Ingratitude is a great doorway. You see, it brings back your past, the negative past to become your present. There are people who have gone from grace to grass because of ingratitude. There are people who have gone from grace to grass because they've taken God for granted. Never get to a point where you feel with or without God, I can still make it. There are preachers making that mistake. There are leaders making that mistake. There are parents making that mistake. There are millionaires and billionaires making that mistake. Money can deceive. Certificates can deceive. Anointing even can deceive. Influence can deceive. You must always remind yourself like the apostle will say, I am what I am by the grace of God. I am what I am. Maybe this is a word for someone. You came to church but full of yourself, not with the humility you used to come with again. After all, you have some money in your account now. You have a house or some estates, wonderful, but he's charging you again. That whilst you are here, you must know that outside of, his God, of God's mercy, great people can be reduced to ashes. It is only by the mercy of God that the weak become strong. It is only by the mercy of God that the poor become blessed. It is only by the mercy of God that the ignorant become full of knowledge. Learn this as a principle. Teach those in your organization. Teach those within your influence. That every time you stand with abundance of any sort before you, learn humility. Let them ask you why you are still rolling while you are blessed. Then you remind them, like David said, I'm rolling and dancing before the Lord who took me from the wilderness and carried your father's kingdom and gave to me. Hallelujah. May a time never come where as a ministry we become full of ourselves and that we do not accord Jesus the glory that is due his name. We are not ashamed to let the nations know that we are all that we are and we are all that we have today. It's not just because of Joshua Selman. I have taught you there are times that your skill can be there as important as it is. Your ability to fish can be there. You can be at the seaside, the correct place. Having the correct tools, your boat, your net, your skill, and yet you will not catch fish. Mm. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me remind us for the next five minutes as to why we are here. I felt stirred in my heart to still do this to remind us. Paul said, I will not be negligent to bring you in remembrance of these things, although ye already know them and I establish in this present truth. I put together about five or six points to help us again before we get to our teaching tonight very quickly. Number one, why are you here? Why are you always here? Why will you continue to be here? One, to encounter God. In order of priority, the first reason why he's drawn you to this house, to this place, whether here on site or connecting online, is to encounter God. Number two, why are you here? To access spiritual intelligence. Next time you come here on your way here, and even while you invite the many that you invite to be on their way, perhaps someone is connecting for the first time here on ground, many, many on, you know, online. It's important to remind you that you're connected and you are here to access spiritual intelligence, to understand the laws and the principles of the kingdom. Number three, why are you here? You are here to build your faith. You are here to build your faith faith this is why we engage in prayer building up ourselves in our most holy faith as we pray in the spirit this is why we worship hallelujah build our faith there are different levels of faith there is no faith there is small or little faith there is great faith there is exceeding great faith our assignment is to help you by the word of god to transit through these various phases of faith and i hope you know that the kind and the quality of faith that you have, meaning your conviction and your ability to respond to the word of God, 
determines the quality of your outcomes as far as your Christian experience is concerned. You are here to build your faith. Number four, why are you here? You are here to receive help, mercy, and strength. Write that down. The house of God is a place to receive help, to receive mercy, and strength. Tempted to give you two scriptures, Psalm 20 and verse 1. 20 and verse 1. Just to buttress on that point. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Verse 2. It says, send thee help. From where? His sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. And so you are here to receive help, to receive mercy, and to receive strength. Let's try Psalm 84 and verse 7. Psalm 84 and verse 7. They go from strength to strength. Everyone. How many of them? Shout it one more time, please. Every one of them in Zion who appears before the Lord. That means every time you appear before the Lord, there is a portion of strength. Strength that you receive. So you are here to access help. You are here to access mercy. You are here to access strength. Number five. Why are you here? Listen carefully now. You are here as part of your commitment towards kingdom advance. This is the fifth reason why you are here. This is the fifth reason why you come to the house of God. You are here as part of your commitment towards kingdom advance. When you participate in the prayers, when you participate in the worship, when you participate in giving, when you participate in the attendance, the gift of your presence and your attention, all of these are expressions of your commitment. Every time you come, every time you connect, what you are saying is that, Lord, I am interested in your program and my attendance, my participation in worship, my participation in prayer, my participation through my giving, that means if you come to the house of God and whilst people are praying, you don't pray. You're not really participating. When you come to the house of God and people are worshipping and you're there just lost, distracted, maybe punching your phones, doing some things that you should not be doing. You see, it is a message you are sending to heaven that I'm not interested in you nor your program. If you are here and people are giving and you say, well, those who have money should give. Or perhaps you are not interested at all. Your worship, your prayer, your giving, and then your attention. Your attention. When the word of God comes, that is not the time to keep pinching yourself up and down. You will know immediately that is an attack. Hallelujah. You must sustain the discipline to endure sound doctrine. To settle down, hear the word of God. The same way a doctor ministers... Uh, a medical prescription to a patient and tells the person take these two in the morning two in the afternoon two in the night sometimes you are tired you don't feel like taking it but you remember that the doctor loves you and is interested in your being whole and so you discipline yourself the doctor will not be disciplined for you he will prescribe the drug or the treatment it is yours to follow and if you follow as prescribed you will see that you begin to enjoy health until you become perfected. I have taught us here, it is pride as a student to arbitrarily edit the things that you are being taught, especially when the people communicating it have proofs in that area. Now, men of God are not God. We make mistakes. We are people who are limited in knowledge. We are all growing. But with respect to the areas where there are results, it is foolish for people who do not have results to begin to edit when you have not produced results. When you produce results, you now are at a vantage position where you can now edit perhaps, maybe this is this way, but a student who comes into a lecture or a school for the first time, no. When you also become a PhD holder or a professor, then you can rob minds now as colleagues. And you can say, Professor, even though you were a professor before me, have you considered this? My research has brought more addition to this, and it will now make sense. But there are many believers with no results who are quick to edit everything they hear. 
and it's part of the reasons why many people remain stunted. May that be minus you in Jesus' name. The humility of heart to receive, the humility of heart to contend for light until you become. May God release that for you in Jesus' name. So you come to the house of God and you are here every week as part of your commitment towards kingdom advance. Can I give you two more? The number what now? The sixth reason why you are here is to fellowship with the saints. This is very important. You are not just here to encounter God alone. You can have that encounter in your room. You are not just here to encounter a man of God alone. You are here under this corporate anointing to fellowship with the saints. This is very powerful. The Bible encourages the fellowship of the saints. Kingdom relationships, kingdom connections are very important. Some of you is in coming to church, you will meet with your destiny helpers. It is in coming to church, you can even meet with your spouse. It's in coming to church, you can meet with someone who God can use to lift you. Hallelujah. I told you that when we are under the corporate anointing, the blessing is both vertical and horizontal. Coming from God through the man of God to you, but coming from God through the person seated around you to you. So you are receiving both ways. You may be listening to me right now, but you'll be amazed how many things God will teach you, not directly from me, but by someone, maybe that sense of courtesy and honor, maybe your neighbor's raptness and attentiveness to the word, despite what you know that they know. That can be a message for you already and take away an arrival mentality, you see. So while God is speaking through the man of God, God is also speaking through your neighbor. The final reason why you are here, empowerment. You are here for empowerment and that in ever increasing measures. You are here for empowerment. Empowerment to supply the spiritual wherewithal that helps you to become, that helps you to advance. You are here for empowerment. I remind you of these things so that every time you come, it does not become a ritual. There is no blessing when you just come religiously. You come and share the grace and not become. Everything that makes for every single koinonia service is tailor-made in the place of prayer, consecration, diligence, discipline to deliver maximally for the purpose of your spiritual growth. Hallelujah. Are we together? Are you ready for tonight now? Please lay your hands on your head. Father, speak to me. My heart is open to hear you. My destiny is open to rise. Clarity of understanding. Please play the strings for me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We bless you. Are you praying? Ask the Lord to visit you today. Someone is praying. This is the least level I will be at. I will be at. After this service, I'm rising to a higher pedestal spiritually. For in Jesus' name we pray. Manifesting spiritual realities. Manifesting spiritual realities. You will be marvelously blessed tonight. I want to show you a very powerful secret in the spirit. Manifesting spiritual realities. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that there is a spirit realm and there is a physical realm. I'm teaching now. Please lend me your attention. The Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that there are various dimensions that man has the privilege of interacting with. And chiefest among them is the realm of the spirit or what we know from our earth standpoint to be the invisible realm and then the physical realm or the material realm that we call the visible realm hallelujah this is very important romans chapter 1 and verse 20 please man has the privilege and the liberty of interacting with this realm we have the advantage of the duality of realms romans 1 and verse 20 says for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things which are made, 
even his eternal power and Godhead so that we are without excuse. So he's saying that the things that are manifest are a testimony to the fact that there is a realm that birthed them. That everything physical, everything material is a testament that there is another kind of reality beyond the material realm. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. Very profound statement that Paul made to the church in Colossae. He says, for by him were all things created. Let's read together. That are in heaven. You see that now? And that are in earth. Uh -huh, visible and invisible. One more time. Visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones. That means there are visible thrones. But there are invisible thrones. There are visible dominions. There are visible principalities. There are visible powers. But there are also invisible dimensions. That everything in the physical has its parallel in the realm of the spirit. Visible and invisible. Are we learning now? This is very important. Last scripture, Matthew chapter 3, 16 to 17. This is Jesus now. Jesus is in the physical realm, having become flesh. The Bible says when Jesus was baptized, they had an experience they had never had. The people there, not just Jesus. The Bible says straightway, he came out of a physical water and the heavens were open and he saw the Spirit of God, not just descending from the sky, descending from that invisible realm that opened through the atmosphere. The Bible says they saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him, verse 17. And a voice, the voice did not speak from a radio station. The voice was not one of the people there. An invisible voice, but then it, it, it echoed through a visible realm and the people heard it. This is my beloved son. Meaning that the voice spoke a language that their minds could understand. In whom I am well pleased. So it is clear that there is a spirit realm. And there is an invisible, a, vis, a physical realm. Listen, as simple as this sounds, you will never be able to manifest realities and that includes your destiny. If all you see and all you know is this three-dimensional realm, you are already disadvantaged for life. The consciousness, the awareness that there is a dimension, are we together? Above and beyond this physical realm already puts you at a vantage position. It is on this one reality that whether you serve Satan or serve God, if you are to excel in your spirituality, there is a mandate upon you that you must believe the existence of the realm of the spirit and the supremacy of the realm of the spirit. That means its ability to superimpose upon the physical realm. This is powerful. It is the reason why we are not discouraged when we see physical things. Because of the awareness that there is a reality in the spirit that is higher and greater than what we see. Are we together? So you can see someone who has been plagued by sickness. And you know that there are resources in the realm of the spirit that can be made available to that individual under a certain condition. My God, this is why you can see someone who is poor, dejected, and you come with that understanding that all that this man has is not all he can have. There are resources beyond the physical realm. The second thought that you need to know tonight is that realities are only made manifest. Realities are only made manifest when we learn how to transport these realities from the realm of the spirit to the physical realm. I'll take it again. Realities are only made manifest when we learn how to transport those realities from the realm of the spirit to the physical realm. That means those realities and those resources, whatever they are, they will do us no good provided they remain in the realm of the spirit. 
Are we together? We need to learn the spiritual technology that can translate those resources from the realm of the spirit to be made manifest. Someone tonight, you are hearing the real cure for poverty. You are hearing the real cure for all kinds of satanic oppression. You are hearing the real cure for manifesting your destiny. There are realities in the realm of the spirit. There are resources in the realm of the spirit beyond the imagination of the average person, beyond the imagination even of the saints. Our assignment is number one, to agree that they are there. Number two, to learn how to transport those realities. And this is my assignment tonight. Hallelujah. Watch this. How many of you know that once upon a time, and even until now, there are treasures beneath the earth where you are seated now? Only God knows how many treasures. Not even science can comprehensively exhaust the treasures and the mineral resources that are under the earth. Science is still learning. Are we together now? And there are resources under the earth. Now, whether you are aware or not, those resources are there. But whether they will become to your advantage has to do with your discovering their presence and knowing how to mine them from the earth. Are we together now? You can have a farm full of gold or diamond or iron ore or whatever it is and you can run around with that awareness. That awareness will not prosper you. Even though it's an advantage, you can tell everybody I have a plot of land or a hectare of land and I promise you I'm not lying. That land has within it gold, has within it diamond, has within it iron ore. In fact, you can even get a few people to help you test and they can say it's true and yet you can remain dejected, you can remain poor and miserable because you must have the resources, say resources, the intelligence to be able to mine it out. It says counsel is like deep waters but a man of understanding will draw it out. Somebody is finding his way out finally. John chapter 1 and verse 14. The word became flesh. This scripture has inspired me for years. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Who are the us? Physical people. The word domiciled in the invisible realm through some technology found its way to have a material expression. And the Bible says we beheld. So it was not just a vision. When Jesus as the word became Jesus, the child, the baby, he was seen of men. He was seen of angels. You didn't need to be prophetic to see him. Once you were alive, you could see the baby wrapped up in a manger. They saw him as a teenager. They saw him when he grew to become an adult. Invisible things can become visible. Invisible resources can be transported to become a system of advantage to the believer. And I'm praying for you. Everything God has placed in the realm of the spirit that is needed for your destiny actualization. But through ignorance, it's been waiting there for years. May you sustain the intelligence to make it manifest. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sit down please. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3. Let's read NIV or the message translation. The Bible says, true faith. Can we have any? Okay. It says, by faith we understand. Watch this. That the universe was formed at God's command. So that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Can we have the message? Is that possible? MSG. It says, by faith we see the world called into existence by God's word. What we see created by what we do not see. What we do not see is what created what we see. Did you get that now? What we do not see, the invisible realm, is what created this realm. This thing you call anointing, do you see it? Show me anointing. 
Are you going to lift a bottle of um, um, olive oil and show me? Is that anointing? Does a tree produce anointing? No. The anointing can only be trapped in a material vessel like a mantle or whatever. But where is that anointing? When the Bible says God anointed Solomon, where did it come from? Can you show me the remains of what fell on him? Yet you could not deny the effect. It fell on a physical man. He grew up and demonstrated intelligence. Are we together now? The things which appear, the crowds which appear, the resources which appear, the influence which appear, they are only a manifestation of realities that are available. Are we together now? And that if you know how to transport those realities, then you will live an invincible life of dominion even in your world today. When you lay hands on a sick person, you are not rubbing anything on your hands. What flows through you to that sick person? When you stretch your hands towards someone and he receives an impartation, where is the connection? What actually flows? From where? Invisible resources. But their reality can be proven in this realm. Here and now. When you speak to men and say in the name of Jesus, may God open the door. Can you show me the words? Where are the words? Can you hold it? So why do you lift your hands to say I receive? What are you receiving? Did you feel anything when you received? Yet you believe something rested on you and you go out carrying that consciousness and you return back rejoicing, knowing sometimes the impact is so dramatic that even your physical stature cannot hold the weight of what rests on you. Yes, it is invisible. These are transactions happening. Listen, they are spiritual transactions. You cannot see it and yet your body attests to the fact that something is happening. How about the fire you feel? How about the warmth, the movement of the anointing in your body while the word is coming? Burning within your spirit like it did to the men at, Om at Emmaus. What is responsible for it? You think it's just sounds? Can a speaker make you that convicted? Can a mic make you that convicted? I'm just telling you that there are realities. You are here seated now. All you see is not all that is happening. If I ask you to describe all that is happening, you will say, I am listening to a man preaching. That is almost one over a hundred. There are many things happening. God is removing things. God is returning things. The Spirit of God is walking through angelic ministries, walking on the minds of people, just because you cannot see it. Are we together? As these words are coming, listen, the Lord is spreading these words by his spirit to people so that what is leaving me is not the same thing resting on you. There are things being added on that rest on others. That is why you will be hearing different things even though it's the same person communicating. The realm of the spirit, the wealth of resources. So when God speaks to you, he speaks with the consciousness of the vast resources that are available to back you. Whether you are aware of it or not. See that now. Now if I ask you a question, assuming you are a multi-millionaire, and I ask you, are you a millionaire? You say yes. If I say, where is the money? You say it's in the bank. Which bank and where is it? You are as confident, yet the money is not with you. But you are confident that I know that I have one million naira or one million dollars or whatever in the bank. You can beat your chest and say, I know I am a rich man. And have no pressure to prove it at all. You may put your hands in your pocket and bring out nothing. And yet nobody can dare tell you you are poor. So why do believers walk as though they are helpless? Simply because you touched your pocket and there was nothing physical there. Or your physical phone showed you zero zero naira 
and you use that to describe yourself and heaven is saying I, you are wasting potentials here you do not understand the vast resources so God helps you by coming to the your dream life and showing you certain things that are available you wake up and say it's a lie God can is joking with me everything you see manifest in the life of the believer comes from somewhere I want you to pay attention I'm stimulating your creativity because the keys that I'm about to show you now it will change your life forever I tell you some of you will leave this place without any car without anything and yet you'll be jumping like a madman after this service because you will know that you have learned something you have closed a door that Satan uses to discourage you and lie to you. Apostle, where are the members? They are first in the realm of the spirit. You are not able to see them there. That's why you will never see them physically. Where is the house? Where is the level in the spirit? Let me tell you the truth. Anything that ever manifests is because it found its parallel in the spirit. If it cannot find it there, it cannot be made manifest, including trouble. Hmm. All kinds of troubles have their spiritual form. They can be pulled down from the realm of the spirit by the manipulation of spiritual laws, courtesy demons, and be made manifest. So men are manipulated mentally to act in a certain way that allows those laws to work against you. You call it tragedy. You call it all kinds of things. But there is an intelligent explanation to those things. Walk with me now. Hmm. There are two major challenges I wrote here with believers. And I want you to listen, please. As far as manifesting spiritual realities are concerned, there are two major challenges with believers. Number one, ignorance of the provisions Right, please, I'll be slow enough for you to write. I need you to write this. Ignorance of the provisions and resources available to the believer in Christ. This is the first major challenge. Ignorance of the provisions. Ignorance of the resources available to the believer in Christ. This is the first challenge with believers. Ignorance of the provisions ignorance of the resources available to the believer in Christ two quick scriptures second Peter 1 and verse 3 the first major challenge with believers as far as manifesting spiritual realities is concerned is we are largely ignorant that there are even provisions and resources beyond this realm real provisions available as a system of advantage to the believer here's what the bible says according as his divine power hath given unto us how many things all things that pertain unto life and the things that pertain unto godliness all things that pertain unto life and all things that pertain unto godliness have been given unto us ephesians 1 and verse 3 ephesians 1 and verse 3 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Please shout it after me. Say all spiritual blessings. All spiritual blessings. One more time in concert. Say all spiritual blessings. All spiritual blessings. So this is what Paul says has been given to us. That he's given to us all spiritual blessings. Another way to put it is all blessings. But they are spiritual in nature are we together the first challenge is the challenge of ignorance of the provisions and the resources that are available to the believer in Christ what is the second challenge the second challenge is ignorance on how to convert those provisions to their material expressions how to convert ignorance on how to convert those spiritual provisions to their material expressions for the profiting of the believer i'll take it again 
The second major challenge with believers is ignorance on how to convert the spiritual resources, the spiritual provisions that are available for us in Christ, how to convert them to their material expressions for the profiting of the believer. Jesus put it powerful in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10. Matthew 6 and verse 10. He says, thy kingdom come. That invisible influence of your government, let it come by your will being done in this physical realm as it is in the immaterial realm. That means let realities be made manifest in this realm the same way it is in the realm of the spirit. Ignorance on how to convert these spiritual realities to translate them from just being spiritual resources. Listen, how many of you know that science and technology as we call it today is an attempt to show us that realities can be transported? Isn't it amazing that you can dig down to the earth, ladies and gentlemen, mine minerals that don't make sense, mine oil, a dark smelly paste of, of accumulation of all kinds of decompositions over many years and put them together and now begin to pass them through various processes. Out of those minerals will come your phone. Out of that oil will come the gas that powers your generator, powers your car, and whatever it is. So conversion is a possibility. Profiting does not happen at the point of discovery. Profiting happens at the point of conversion. Are we learning now? If I gave you one jerry can of a dark smelly substance called oil, it may not profit you so much until you go and pass it through a process that now distills everything and you can now get your fuel as we call it your gas and get other things byproducts from it many believers number one do not even know the provisions and the resources that are available and for those who know it just stops at knowing do you know healing is yours yes do you know abundance is yours? Yes. Do you know increase is yours? Yes. Do you know restoration is yours? Yes. Have you experienced it? No. Why? The problem is the knowledge of the technology that converts those realities. Man of God, you need to hear this. If not, you'll be frustrated in ministry. Businessman, you need to hear this. If not, you'll be frustrated. When you go to the place where they make cars, all you are going to see it's an architectural design, a 3D representation of that car and all the metallic resources that will put that car together. But you step out and give the people a few days, a few months and you will come back and find a real car that you can enter and drive a real car. It was not a car they found under the earth. They found metals but they were able to combine it in a way that produced cars now with such beauty and elegance. Imagine what can happen to your life when you know how to convert these spiritual resources. Your life will become a wonder first to you and any other person who cares to see. And may that be your testimony. By this revelation, let ashes and shame and everything that has mocked God, let it fade out of your life and destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you will rise from this understanding and build mighty ministries for Jesus. Mighty evangelical platforms for Jesus. Mighty businesses with transcontinental value based on the things you are receiving. It's true. It's true. It's the realm of your glory. It's the realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. It's the realm of your glory. It's the realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. 
We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. Holy. Ta da da. Ta da da. Ta da da. Aliba sabaronda siata. Ta da da. Ta da da. So the ability to not only know that there are spiritual resources in a dimension that is greater than science, a dimension greater than the three-dimensional realm, and the ability to interact with that realm with such mastery that you can convert and bring to your domain all the resources that are available and needed for your profiting. The ability to convert these spiritual resources to their material expressions for the profiting of the saints. Now, let me give you the keys. There are a few keys that help men to transport spiritual realities of any kind and any sort according to the will of God and to give it material expression. And I please want you to believe the things you are about to hear because they will work for you in the name of Jesus Christ. This is how great businesses in the kingdom have been built. This is how great visions in the kingdom have been built. This is how great enviable destinies. If you have ever looked at a destiny and wondered how did they do this? I want to show you how it happened right now. And I assure you by God, it doesn't matter where you are in life and destiny. If you pay attention, the things I'm sharing with you have a grace following them. It is not only the information you are going to receive. Some of you, whilst you are hearing, like I taught you, there is the Spirit of God will be quickening you. Something, there is an enlargement that will be happening to your spirit, like a rubber ring. Something will be, there will be a stretching in the spirit until greater glory, glory in a, a greater measure is revealed through your life. In the name of Jesus, key number one, <laughs> manifesting spiritual realities what is the first key that controls birthing transporting and bringing spiritual resources from the realm of the spirit where they are domiciled to the physical realm where they are needed for the profiting of the saints number one the first key contend all Kingdom resources, I must say this as a preamble. All kingdom resources are first spiritual. That's not the first key. Just a preamble to the first key. All kingdom resources, write this down please. They are first spiritual. That means they are realities that reside first in the realm of the spirit. Your prosperity, your influence, the anointing of the spirit upon your life, everything that God has said, is a reality in the spirit all kingdom resources are first spiritual they are realities that reside in the spirit realm now let me give you the keys number one what is the first key when you want to transport realities to be made manifest contend for light contend for light this is the first key light here means knowledge knowledge of the resources that are available for you in Christ. You cannot open up your heart to receive resources whose availability and presence you are not even aware of. Hallelujah. If I do a transfer to your account and you do not get an alert, an email, or any other way of knowing, did you know, say perhaps it were your house rent that I sent to you, one million naira or two million naira, or three million naira 
and you can be seated and praying saying God can you help me I'm in trouble my rent is expired the landlord is coming for me maybe they are serving me a court summon because I'm unable to pay my rent whereas two days ago three days ago a real transfer was made to your bank are we together and literally in a, in, in, in a matter of seconds less than a minute you can make that transfer from your phone and find peace yet because you do not know you can be lamenting whereas your banker knows that you have an uh, you have some money there this is how it is with many believers they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course imagine the many things that god has kept for you that you do not know strategic relationships but first in the spirit strategic help but first in the spirit men and women raised by god to help you while you serve him but that reality is still in the spirit advancement restoration these are all possibilities and realities but that they are locked up they reside in the spirit everything needed for your excelling as a believer is already provided for this is a fact you have to train your spirit man and your mind to believe all things all things the bible says all things are yours contend for light contend for knowledge this is why you came to church now you are hearing apostle are you saying that the cure for my rent issue is already in the spirit yes sir are you saying that i can walk free of this sickness that the provision the spiritual resources that can translate to a new body part the spiritual resources that can translate to health they are not coming they are already a reality there every one naira one dollar you will ever have and make in this life the reality of those resources are already in the realm of the spirit believe me <laughs> do you believe this contend for light light beyond the realm of ignorance convince yourself by the spirit of god the entrance of his word brings light what you are hearing now is giving you confidence is killing away carnality so satan will tell you if it is true where is the anointing man of god prove that you are anointed by laying hands on someone nothing happens don't worry the problem is not the presence of that reality or, or, or the, the falsehood of what you believe. No, what you believe is the truth. It's just that you have not mastered how to convert it. How to make it a reality. Hallelujah. Contend for light. Let's hurry up. Number two. What is the second key? I want to dwell a bit on this second key. Because it is a miracle that changed my life. My God. It's easy for the average believer who has been in church to understand point one. Light. Every gathering in God's presence with God's people with a good teaching priest is a feast of light. But the reason why light does not profit many believers is because of the second point. Write this down. The second key to manifesting spiritual realities. I wrote here. Press into the realm of consciousness. And conviction you just write it and I'll explain to you press into the realm of consciousness and conviction press into the realm of consciousness and conviction Psalm 36 verse 9 for with thee is the fountain of life read the remaining line please in thy light one more time there are two things the bible is saying here number one is you need his light but when his light arrives that is not all you need there is a kind of light you must see through his light in your light i have seen your light but there is a light i need to see in the midst of your light he says in your light shall we see light press into the realm of consciousness 
and conviction. Now watch this. The word conscious means to be aware of and to have the ability to respond to. When they say you are conscious towards something, it means that number one, you are aware of that thing or that environment and that you have the ability to respond. To be conscious means to be awake onto or to be awake towards. So when you are sleeping, they call you unconscious with respect to that realm. Do you know why? Because even though you are alive, your consciousness is not there. You are sleeping. So two people can be discussing within the room. And although you are there, you may not hear what they are saying because you are asleep. When they wake you and give you a few minutes to get yourself together, now you are conscious of the environment. And what is the proof that you are conscious? You can respond intelligently. If I ask you, how are you? Or where did you keep the key? You can answer me. You may not be able to give me that answer while you are asleep and yet you are not dead. Are we together now? So when we talk about being conscious, it means being alive unto a reality. And let me tell you the truth. Until you rise to a realm beyond just light, the realm of consciousness and conviction, you will never, never have those realities manifest. This is the assignment of a mystery in the spirit called meditation. Write it down, please. The assignment of meditation is to transport spiritual realities beyond the book, beyond the message, into your spirit, into your consciousness. The mystery that controls that transportation is called meditation. The second key press into the realm of consciousness and conviction to be conscious means to be aware of now watch this i wrote something down here you are conscious of a thing when it dominates your thoughts did you hear that you are only conscious of a thing when it has gained dominance over your thoughts that means your thinking has been influenced by that reality now it has come to a realm of consciousness. Look up, please. How many of you have gone to any embassy whatsoever? Don't lift your hands. Maybe to go and apply for a visa. American embassy, UK embassy. You know how you think about it all through the night? You've thought about it. If for any reason you wake up, what is on your mind? You are imagining, I'm standing before the consular now. This dress I'm wearing, no, I'll change it. I don't want trouble. I need to get this visa. You see how your whole day, some of you, it affects your mood. You are not able to eat till you return. And it's not like it's a doctor that said you should not eat. You are just thinking. That thing has happened as a result of meditation. You literally see yourself. You've never been to the embassy, say. You don't even know how it looks like. Yet your mind is so powerful, your mind will simulate a consular officer standing there and yourself answering all kinds of questions. That is how you are into that project. Let me tell you the truth. Those who build anything great are not just those who have wishful thinking. They have become immersed into the thing that drives them. The Bible calls it the zeal of the Lord. That the zeal of the Lord can consume a man. Are we together? To a point where what dominates your thoughts is the reality of that truth according to scripture. All through while Jesus walked upon the earth, he kept talking about the purpose for which he came. He kept talking about the fact that he was going to die. He will be buried. What kind of a man keeps talking about his death? You will call it negative confession. It was not negative confession. Jesus kept repeating, I'm going to die, oh, and I will come back to life again. To the point that Peter rebuked him and said, stop saying all these things. The reason why many people cannot become and they cannot manifest realities is that they have not taken the truths of scripture and meditated upon it until it moved past the realm of just information and sunk into your spirit. 
something happens to a man when the word of God becomes spirit and life it occupies your consciousness you cannot be separated from that truth again you have so believed it you have become one with it are we together now yes this is very powerful you have become one with that belief you can't deny it again you can't betray it again the way you know that light has not entered your consciousness is that the moment it does not work you are in a you are in a hurry to divorce it because you never truly believed it hallelujah so if for instance someone is a giver and you just hear one message against giving you say thank god i've been looking you never believed in giving never 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 consciousness when you get to that point the day you meditate on your being anointed one day as you are opening the scripture light it will no longer be thou anointest my head with oil that is stories a day will come something will leap upon you and whether you are sleeping whether you are wearing a pajamas or on jean or on suit the consciousness not just by shouting and saying i'm anointed it's a settled reality Let me tell you with all humility i sat down with this book and as i meditated upon it it didn't happen every day but one day certain things just entered my spirit so this is how much power the believer can carry it says you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth when i saw it i don't know if i believed it the first time I was just sincerely reading the Bible but one day light entered me the true spirit of dominion that there is no territory that sustains the power to fight your influence if you have not carried the consciousness of certain things you will only be a victim your mind will be swinging from left to right one day I meditated on the scripture that says whatsoever he doeth prospers now let me tell you that looks like a simple story oh yes whatsoever i do it prosper amen that no you have not gotten it you act on that thing it will never work for you he shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of waters one day is by 2 a.m in the morning this is you you are meditating on that thing whatsoever he do it prospers you look at your hands whatsoever he do it prospers whatsoever he do it prospers it will make sense to you in a way that will annoy somebody close to you because they don't know what has entered you whatsoever he do it prospers from that day you will never fail in anything again because it has entered your consciousness this is what it means in Ezekiel 2 and verse 2 and the spirit entered into me the spirit of any revelation if it has not entered you you will keep gyrating this is the problem with the body of christ we shout over revelations that have not moved past the realm of knowledge into your consciousness in this shall all the families of the earth be blessed i meditated on that scripture and I came to a conclusion that I cannot be a cause to my world. In this shall the families of the earth be blessed. Where I come from notwithstanding is, is a blessing that God gave to Abraham and his seed. And Galatians 3.29 says, And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So he's talking about me. I am a blessing. If I come to your house, I am a blessing some things must leave and some things must come if i shake hands with you it's not pride some things must leave and some things must come if you listen to me some things must leave and some things must come it's a consciousness it's not about empty boasting you can be shouting and the realm of the spirit will say jesus i know paul i know but who are you this is what great men like bishop Oyedeko meditated upon and he said god told him he cancelled his ministrations and he said get down and make my people rich 
Now, that may, a lot of people find it offensive. That's why he didn't say it to everybody. He said it to the one who can believe him. Mm. Hallelujah. This is what I believe. Oh. This reading things randomly. When the spirit of revelation comes to you, eh, you can stay on one scripture for one week. It's not a competition to finish the Bible. It's that one scripture that has a treasure that defines the next 10 years of your life. You stay there till the spirit of that word. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall. He never said I shall not want money. If all you are thinking about is money, it's a sign that you are thinking carnally. I shall not want. This is the realm of sufficiency. I shall not want men. I shall not want things. I shall not want influence. No. This revelation damages insufficiency forever. Never will you be without help. If God sends you to America, you shall not want. If he sends you to Europe, you shall not want. If he brings you to Abuja, you shall not want. You are crying simply because you do not know. You are wanting. Even though you are reading the scripture, it is not yet in your consciousness. Take it higher for me. We will pray until we are changed. We will pray until we are changed. We will pray until we are changed. We are changed. We are changed. We will stay until we are changed. Can I tell you the truth? There is nothing you can do with a man that has caught light beyond the book. If it has entered that realm of consciousness, only death can stop it from happening. It's a, it's a realm where it is settled. No matter what you say or do not say, as far as that result happening, it's a realm. Listen, this is a reality that both science and religion tell you that controls manifestation the realm of consciousness listen let me tell you the truth still take it half for me there are things I believe I can never be a victim of till Jesus comes and this is not empty talk I have stayed with scripture until that thing one of it is that I can never lack the help of men. No. No. It's not because I'm anointed. It's the revelation that brought that anointing. This thing you see, this grace called favor that you are shouting. You read it, you will never get it. it that's not how it works. We will stay until we are found. 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 Until we are found. Until we are found. When God called me into ministry, I took time to pray. One of the things I covenanted with God with was that I did not want to manipulate God's people because of this money thing. I saw sincere, well-meaning people who love the Lord. But once you are pushed by the pressure of ministry, you would do things you never planned doing. But I know that I have to eat. And the implication of ministry is that you will feed many people. You will be like Father Abraham, having many children, your own and the ones that have forced themselves to be your own. And I said, God, I don't want to tell people lies. 
I had great men like Bishop Oyedepo, great men like my dear revered mentor, Dr. Miles Munro. They talked about the potency of walking in the blessings of God. While others were there arguing in pride with no result, I said, God, you can't be lying. Please show me. I confess my ignorance. I have read this thing, but it's not working. There are human beings in the world, but nobody's looking my direction. I don't need to go to a herbalist. There is a way. Hi. Job said there is a path which no fowl has seen, that the whelps of the lion has not gotten there. When I caught that revelation of I shall not want, I said, this is it. And God is able to make all grace. If you think what prospers men is business, get ready to suffer till Jesus comes. Now, I'm not, I'm not against those things. Don't get me wrong. But first things first. The realm of the spirit is what controls the physical realm. But when you hold it there, bah, that's it. You've held it. You've held it. It's true. The same thing with the ministry of the spirit, the anointing. I saw great people that I admired walking in dimensions of the anointing. And I said, there has to be a way. I got all the teachings and the materials. I don't want to do a ministry speaking to people and they're shouting amen. Coming week after week, making sacrifices and then they don't testify. That is evil and is wicked. In fact, it's fraud. I said, I don't want that kind of thing. Father, show me the secret to real power. Real, genuine power. I have found David, my servant. Ah, so God can find men, but until he finds his servant, he will not anoint you. God can find Joshua Selman, but he's looking for his servant. For as long as you are still Joshua Selman, that oil will not come to your head until you become his servant. The anointing is not for men of God. The anointing is for servants. Genuine people who love Jesus beyond their reputation, who want to see him glorified. You see. You know why sometimes you hear me tell these guys to play these things? This is not, it's not a movie. One day, I was meditating on scripture and the Lord took me to the story of Elisha. He said, bring me a mistral. And while the mistral played, he said, the hand of the Lord came upon him and he began to prophesy. Then he says, I will reveal my dark sayings upon the heart. It may not work for everyone, but that is how light came to me. I valued divine presence when I meditated on the scripture Moses said do not send us from here if your presence I'm showing you how to manifest realities what provided what you are doing is just reading the Bible to ease the guilt of feeling less spiritual you will never never produce anything potent he said if your presence will not go with us and then here's what he said. He said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. I said, that's the key to rest. The presence of God. I remember in 2005, I spent a major part of that year doing a research on Jewish worship and the mystery of God's presence. I wanted to know what was it about Jewish worship and God's presence. That's when you saw that I started falling in love with all this kind of Paul Wilbur songs, King of Kings, we hail you most high. All these songs that came laid down by the Spirit because I found out that there was a connection to these kinds of songs and the Spirit of God and the Shekinah of God. Listen, you must move past the realm of just reading scripture and get it to your consciousness. It will take time but allow the Spirit of God move it. Stay in your one room and read the scripture on how God brings men out. The day it enters your spirit, you will know. The devil will know. Everything around you will know. And like a magnet, it will start drawing from anywhere on earth. The men and the circumstances that must make that word become reality in your life. I assure you on this.
Listen, hear me. The day the power to prosper through meditation comes on you, right where you are, you know how and you know how explosions happen. A nuclear bomb, huh? That's how it will from your place. It's like an explosion in your spirit. It will gravitate everything that must make that revelation true in your life and it will bring it to your life. It is true. Sometimes it's difficult to teach these things because people mistaking it for pride. But by the privilege of God's grace, you see, we have proven these things and will prove it again and again and again. Your consciousness. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. It doesn't stop there. But that is the springboard. The Lord. Not my ability. The Lord. Here's how many of us interpret it. My brain is my shepherd. I shall not want. <laughs> no. The Lord. The journey to lasting wealth starts with the Lord. It does not ignore your mind. It does not ignore your value. But it is the Lord. Because he must be Alpha and Omega. Are we together? Sit down, let me give you the third. For someone, let me give you a little assignment. Just lay your hand gently on your head. I want you to think of one scripture by the Spirit that you know. There are many scattered in the Bible, but one bailout scripture that you need to meditate upon until light enters your spirit. For some of you, is thou anointest my head, thou anointest my ministry. Are you seeing that ministry anointed rising from where it is? Are you seeing yourself rising? As a father of nations you may not be physically called Abraham but ladies and gentlemen when what God told Abraham enters you nothing will keep you down you just do what I'm asking you to do and you see a miracle that is happening to your spirit man you're a businessman take away your mind from your brain and look on to Jesus some of you are in ministry you have struggled and struggled it's not an issue of struggling. There is a consciousness. For as long as there are 8 billion people on earth, everybody will not tell God no. He can fish help for you from everywhere. There are some of you, the revelation for you should be that God is the one who gives you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. Mm. I am the Lord that teacheth thy hands to prosper. I am the Lord that teacheth thy hands to prosper. You have to be taught. No, it's not your ability. You are taught. You just take a minute to meditate on this. Some of you, is that meditation that will cure you from causes forever raised up with him out of every tribe out of every tongue even the worship of the dead yes people were buried in my village but have been exalted exalted beyond every curse exalted beyond every charm any enchantment for someone the revelation for you is no weapon formed against you formed in the secret formed by the conspiracy of men no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper for another surely they shall gather but because they are gathering of not of the Lord they will scatter as much as they have gathered they will come in one way and be dispersed in seven ways Hallelujah. In Jesus name. Hear me. Psalm 119 from verse 97 to 99. Let's hurry up. 
Psalm 119, 97 to 99. Meditation involves hearing. Meditation involves speaking. Meditation involves the power of your imagination. All of them have to come into play as you meditate. Oh, how I love thy law, he says. They, or it is my meditation. How long? The psalmist, all the day, my meditation. Verse 98. Thou, through your commandment, has made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. Last verse. I have more understanding than my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. The secret to my conviction, my meditation, he's saying, or my persuasion, is that I have meditated on that reality. You see, one of the ways you meditate is to repeat thoughts again and again and again. It's a practice till today, till today. I can play a teaching, play a message, play scriptures, play verses again and again. Sometimes I make declarations myself and record it. Prophetic declarations myself and I put it on repeat while I sleep. There are times I want to focus on just two verses. I meditate on those two verses. I first quote them and then make prophetic declarations by myself. They are in my phone. And I play it on repeat. Whether I'm awake or sleeping. Sometimes I'm doing my study and they are playing. The goal is not awareness. I'm transporting it to a realm. When it lands that realm, I know that I'm ready for the next step. I've shared with you my story. When God moved us to Abuja, I was praying and trusting God for direction. And God told me, like he did Abraham, get the map of Abuja, get the map of Nigeria, get the map of Africa, get the map of the world. And he says, start praying with those maps. So every time I'm praying, I will place those maps, four of them. I still have them till today. And lay my hands. One day, something happened to me. I looked at the map of Abuja and it became small. Very small. The city just became, it's like it just shrunk and it became small. I knew a miracle had happened. I knew Koinonia was ready to start. Because that reality of territorial dominion for the sake of his majesty, that's what happened. Hmm. Hallelujah. But every once in a while, not every time, I revisit those maps again. And now that God is sending us to the nations, I carry that map of the world sometimes and I look at it. And I look at the continents from the eyes of the creator. Not from the eyes of an inhabitant. You can't see that far. But when you stand with the creator's lens, you will see that there is no nation you cannot conquer. Men like John Knox saw this and they said, God, give me Scotland, not a community. Give me that territory. Listen, when you do this, you can see great things. You can put your businesses and say, by God's grace, I will have a global business for the kingdom. People will laugh at you. It's, it's not an attack. It's a usual thing with men. Men are permitted to laugh until your result bail you out. Provided you have not produced results, don't be angry that men laugh and mock. Mockers are a natural pathway to greatness. If you don't find them, you're on the wrong path. Their presence validates that you might be doing something right. So you continue. But when you emerge, you get that thing to your consciousness, you will marvel and wonder at what happens to you. Hallelujah. My dear friend, Pastor Shola, when his church got born, we went for a conference in his church, and Pastor Poju said something, just a, a brief session before I came up to preach, and he said something within a few minutes, but it was such a profound blessing. He told the church then, he said, 
take away the memory from your mind of a burnt church and see a great church that God is building. As simple as that statement was, I said, this is it. The Spirit of God quickened that statement while we look not at the things that are seen. You have been seeing your disappointment. Every time you look at your passport, you remember the visa you didn't get. You look at the situation and you see yourself as a beggar forever. You see yourself as a weak man of God in competition with other men of God or getting angry. That is the reason why it keeps you like that. You need to wipe that vision out of your mind. You must have control over your meditation. Finally, brethren, Philippians chapter 4, I believe in verse 8. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, Koinonia help me, think on these things. Anything that is outside this list, the Bible is giving you an advice that meditating on them is a risk to your destiny. Number three, manifesting spiritual realities. Can we continue? I want you to listen to point number three very carefully. Mix the truth you know with faith. Mix the truth you know with faith. Hebrews 4 and verse 2. Mix the truth you have found that has entered into your consciousness. Mix it with faith. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith. What does it mean to mix? Combine. Combine your meditation with faith. What is faith? Your obedience. Your actions of obedience. Obedience to the conditions that connect to the promise. Every speaking of God I have taught you here has conditions connected to it. Listen carefully. The profit point of your Christian adventure is when you find the truth, meditate to create conviction, and then you engage, you mix with obedience, faith. Most people do not obey scripture. They want the results, but they are not willing to obey. To obey means you have to embrace the spirit of wisdom. What does the Bible say you should do that connects to the promise you are looking for? For instance, the Bible talks about laziness and begging, how that both of them are related. So when you meditate on the fact that the Bible says a diligent hand shall be made fat is that true what is your point of obedience now whatsoever your hand find it to do huh? that is in righteousness you do as unto god so you can go and get the job even though it's just forty thousand or five or fifty thousand you are obeying you are working in keeping with the law of diligence that there is a relationship between increase and diligence there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Okay? What then is the action point there? That means I will give. Not out of compulsion or manipulation, but with the revelation that number one, I love Jesus. But that the law of increase is connected to giving. And then you do so. And it works for you. That's why I said obedience requires not just zeal, but the spirit of wisdom. You need to know what to do. Master, we have told all night. There are many, many people who are found wanting in the place of obedience. It's why they do not see promises manifest. Let me tell you the truth. As much as I sympathize with the many things happening around our nation, there are people even if dollar were one naira to one dollar, they will still be poor. Because their problem is not Nigeria, 
no whatever government is in power i'm not a politician there is an intrinsic determination to remain lazy huh jesus said the poor you always have with you is your own is your own responsibility to exempt yourself there are people who are very lazy there are others whose energy is not coordinated with wisdom so there is blind dissipation of energy that is not constructive this is what we call productivity channeling your energy with intelligence so that you produce specific outcomes you don't waste energy and resources are we together yes this can be true for ministry as a man of god you cannot sit down lazing around being everywhere talking gossiping jumping from pillar to post and you want god to trust you with the destinies of many you don't sit down to pray you don't sit down to learn you don't open up your heart to grow god is not a scammer he's not a fraudster he's in a business of using serious people not just available people it's wonderful to be available but you must also be usable are we learning now so most of us have found one thing someone after this meeting you need to get angry and tell yourself this week i must start something if a job does not come by the spirit of grace i will read a book i will watch something profitable online i will get up and go and look for there's a land that my brother has i will start farming this week let me farm and fail no problem at the point of obedience that's when the miracle comes he told the ten lepers go and show yourself to the priest the bible says as they went say as they went one more time say as they went the miracle happens at the point of obedience not before obedience maybe there are people here god has spoken to to sow certain seeds according to the revelation and isaac sowed in that land in the time of famine and you are there giving flimsy excuses time will pass the famine will finish and you remain broke when God put it in my heart to do some of the things we are doing now, I became excited because one, I love Jesus sincerely. Two, I love you with all my heart. Three, I love myself with all my heart. You see that? That in my obedience is my rising. I don't rise because I'm a man of God. I rise because I'm a practitioner of the truth of God's word. Koinoni, are we learning? Obedience. Obedience obedience provided you camp around disobedience i guarantee you under god there are certain realities you will never see manifest in your life you can do eye service but eventually your life will show that god has marked your script and he's found you wanting are we learning now yes. obedience for some of you, your, your point of obedience can be to obtain the grace to start being diligent in consistent, fervent prayer. You are a man of God. You are trusting God for increase. Go back and settle down. Some of you, you are leaders that God has called. He's shown you that you are going to be a global leader. With the level of intellectual deficiency you have, it will be a risk for God to trust you at certain heights. Therefore, increase your capacity. Go and borrow vessels. If it means going to get certain certifications to add to your pedigree, your qualification, to give you that edge with respect to what he's called you, go for it. Lazing around and envying people in anger will not solve your problem. Are we together? Getting angry at another man's farm will not make your farm suddenly become green. You will sit down there while weed is growing on your own farm as you are pointing fingers on people who are plowing their farms with diligence. I don't like this family. It, I, I'm sure that they met witches and wizards to rise. The man returns late in the night, finds you sleeping, wakes up early in the morning, you are still sleeping, returns in the afternoon, finds you gossiping, and what a witch. Where is Oga? He's traveled. Where did he go to? He went for a seminar somewhere as a director of a company. Yes, sir. And you sit down there playing something in the afternoon, sitting in the sun, arguing about Nigeria, arguing about Africa, and wondering why your, your store is empty.
Next time you say, I will never be poor, the meaning of that is that I'm determined to do what will make me never to be poor. If you don't finish that statement, you lied. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. Faith. I release the grace for obedience upon you. Shout a believing amen. The grace to walk in keeping with the truths that commit God to perform on your behalf. May that grace be released upon you. If it is the giving grace, may it be released upon you. If it's the praying grace, may it be released upon you. If it's the fasting grace, may it be released upon you. If it's the grace for diligence, may it be released upon you. If it's the grace for value and productivity, may it be released upon you. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Spirit of wisdom. Oh, advice it's a loving advice stop complaining about what is not working bend your head down obtain grace from God and start exempting yourself through obedience let me speak to every young man here complaining about Nigeria and joining in all kinds of profitless debates will not define your reality no we don't shy away from what is happening but let me challenge every responsible person in this ministry from tomorrow Monday make up your mind I'm not complaining again if you don't know what to do wake up and listen to all my teachings on productivity start from there I shall not want listen to it huh the power of productivity listen to it get working and when people want to distract you and eat up your productivity gently tell them sorry that's all right we'll talk about it when I have a bit of free time ah, today is Monday and you are busy already tell them I came to church and I received an apostolic a priestly a fatherly counsel that complaining does not increase it only brings people down are we together now you settle down and begin to work out your salvation with fear and trembling Lord, I came from a family struggling. I make up my mind by grace that things will begin to change now. Some of you may need to go somewhere and say, you know what? Bring me as an apprentice in this company. I will receive salary, but I will receive wisdom. I am tired of laziness. And they say, really? By the third day with favor on your life that you are about to receive, you will be surprised what will happen. God will bring somebody there who will say, I'm looking for a well-behaved gentleman. And the director will say, everybody is busy. Only one guy who does not collect salary. Follow that white man. And that's the end of it. God begins to lift you. I forbid you from being lazy. Shout amen. amen. Listen. Anything you are doing now that you cannot give your all to, stop it. Immediately. I don't care what it is. Anything you are doing with part-time seriousness, leave it immediately look for what is worth giving your all are we together now you will never find me putting my hands in many things because i commit my all in it i rather do only two things in my life and plunge myself if i perish i perish mentality is the mentality of victors are we together you are in a part club there you have never attended the membership meeting you are causing trouble for the people. You are a part worker in church. You are not serious. In your office, you are a ghost worker. In the house of God, you don't come. At home, you are not a serious husband or a serious wife or a serious child. So part, part commitment. I rebuke that spirit now. The Bible says they followed him wholly. There must be something in your life that is worth the investment of your all. Anything you have to give only part of you to is not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. 
When people bring visions for me to lay my hands on, I ask them, can you do this for the rest of your life? If they say, no, this is just for a while. I tell them, okay, while you are doing this, look for what is worth the commitment of your life and also be building it. Nothing wrong in doing things part way, but if that is all you do, you'll be disappointed. When I got into ministry, I knew that I, I will serve God till the day I see his face. There's no plan B. That bridge was burnt by myself. Show me a man that believes in what you are doing and you can push your all in it. I show you the person who will frustrate life and Satan forever till you emerge. Are we together? There are footballers who play football as a ministry. They train, they give their best. There are those who are just looking for money. Nobody invites them because their passion betrays them. There are business people who are out to add value before profit. They give their best. Even when the business is not profitable, they continue. Because what drove them was not just profit, it was impact. So eventually God rewards them. But there are others who from day one, they are looking for money. So they compromise even at the detriment of their own integrity. Provided money will come. There are people today who can do anything that you know, provided it will bring money. Anything. No, you cannot live like that. There are people who will do anything to make ministry work. Anything. And when I say anything, let's hurry up. Number four. What is the fourth key? Pay attention to this one. I sense that there will be a stirring in the spirit as I teach on this fourth one. Are you ready? The fourth key to manifesting spiritual realities, engage in spiritual warfare. Engage in spiritual warfare. You will never manifest anything from the spirit that carries weight without engaging in spiritual warfare. What is spiritual warfare? Establishing victory over spirits. Write it down, please. Establishing victory over spirits and conditions that fight the manifestation of the word in your life. Establishing victory over spirits and over conditions that fight the manifestation of the word in your life. In your life means in your ministry, in your home, in your business, in your sphere of influence. 1 Corinthians 16, 9, spiritual warfare. My God, my dear people, believe this. Believe this. There is a warfare dimension to transporting realities from the spirit to your realm. For a great door, let's read together, one to read. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me uh -huh. and there are many adversaries I've taught you here for every door that is to be opened there are adversaries there are adversaries there are adversaries 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 18 engage in spiritual warfare Paul is speaking and he says, Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, I tried and tried and tried, but Satan himself, not a demon spirit, hindered us. Satan still fights the manifestation. Listen, all unclean spirits are stubborn spirits. All. All demonic unclean clean spirits are stubborn spirits meaning just because the word says they should obey does not mean they will obey the same way the executive arm of a government they pass a decree but it does not mean defaulters will obey they are aware that is the reason why law enforcement agents are released the the basis for the function of law enforcement agents is what the executive are passed is that true or legislature, whatever it is. 
And then when it is passed, they now catch you wanting and the basis of their punishing you is to let you know you have defaulted an executive order somewhere. For instance, stay at home for sanitation. If you default and they catch you, they will tell you you are aware. Are you aware? Yes, sir. If you are fortunate, they pardon you. If you are not, they will find you and you will go to jail. That's how it is. When God says you are a blessing, Satan says, what did he say? No. We will fight it. They first come to you to find out whether you are aware and you believe. Then they find out whether it has become a reality in your consciousness. Then they find out whether you have obtained the grace to obey. If there is no point, they will attack you directly for no reason. The, the reason why Satan attacks primarily is because he's antichrist and he's a thief that comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. There's no point stealing, killing and destruction until there is something to steal, something to kill and something to destroy. Let me tell you the truth. The kind of warfare that you have to fight to birth prophecy to your life, it will take stamina in the spirit. Hallelujah. It is the reason why you see us pray. It is the reason why you see us engage. Behind the physical manifestations that you see, ladies and gentlemen, look at me. Do you know the warfare that Satan puts up just to get you to come here to hear what you are hearing now? You think the devil will leave you to come to your house just like that? But thank God for men and women who understand the art of the altar. Praying and saying, Lord, everyone who should come and hear this word, they will come by the Spirit. So even when your car does not work, just when you are getting offended, your neighbor says, I'm coming for koinonia today, let's go. There's no excuse. It's not a coincidence. It was engineered by priesthood. Say spiritual warfare. A family that does not pray will become a victim of Satan. A couple that don't pray will be a victim of Satan. A mother that does not pray will have her children turn into armed robbers and all kinds of people. A father that does not pray is like a man who opened his gate and said, if you are a thief, just come in. You are welcome to this house. Because if your house is not a house of prayer, I have taught you, it becomes a den of robbers. A believer who does not pray, among many other disadvantages, will become a victim of the arrows that fly by day, the noisome pestilences, the destructions that waste in noonday. Someone shout minus me. Let the devil hear you. Oh, as the arrows fly from wherever. You know, there, there are all kinds of missile technologies today that the army uses, that sometimes when you fire a rocket against a nation, as they detect it, they counter it immediately. It's been programmed. It will explode that thing in the air there and then fire another rocket following the trajectory where that thing came from. Come on now. To backfire back to the place. As I said this thing, it just moved something in my spirit. Back to where it came from. Shalakaposia. Any man that programs anything against your life, in the name that is above all names, he returns back to that devil this night. He returns back to that devil that night. This concept of things backfiring happens so. Ask Haman. Haman dug a pit. He had sized Mordecai. This is how this guy will be hung there. I wonder how he felt when it was his time to hang. The Bible says, now the Lord of peace himself, is that in your Bible? That he will give you peace always and by all means. That means anybody that makes himself the trouble of your destiny, may the God of vengeance arise over them in this season. Anybody that has vowed, that provided he's alive, your family will not laugh. Your family will not smile. I say it again, by the God who sent me, let the sword of vengeance descend upon them this week. Descend upon them this week. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can 
to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.